வாழ்க வையகம் வாழ்க வையகம் வாழ்க வளமுடன் வாழ்க வளமுடன் குரு வாழ்க குருவே துணை தேங்க்யூ தங்கராஜ் மாஸ்டர் ஃபார் கிவிங் மீ திஸ் ஆப்பர்ச்சுனிட்டி டு ஷேர் மை எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸ் டு கம் டென்டேஜன்ஸ் டு கட் ப்ராக்டிஸ் இன் வாட் ஐம் டூயிங் நவ் um now my spiritual journey began about roughly 4 years back uh, when i visited uh, the belur mat the ramakrishna mat at calcutta um because i was uh, interested in advaita vedanta so people uh, who don't know advaita vedanta is basically advaita is a duality uh, advaita is non duality and vedanta can be uh, said as uh, divided as with Uh, and anta with this knowledge and anta is end so the end of the vedas is the upanishads so i was deeply interested in that and that's that's where it all uh, began but my spiritual journey actually quite intensified when i attended the uh, the sky kundalini practice which was organized by uh, dr sakti and dr satya at preston in november 2019 so my um, sort of uh, spiritual journey actually started there to be honest um and obviously tangaji master was there uh, uh, presiding over this i mean um, and uh, uh, dr sakti and dr satya i think if i remember right uh, arunadi deepa was there as well uh, i'm not sure whether uh, i'm mentioning the right person um so since then uh, we had regular group meditation sessions on saturday mornings at sakti's residence and we about four or five uh, usually join on saturday mornings whenever uh, uh, time permitting and uh, situation permitting um and we build upon whatever we learned um and that sort of reinforced um what we were so what what i learned uh, during this foundation course um uh, in november actually now i have to mention uh, in particular uh, professor pundraj who is actually a direct disciple of uh, vedatri maharshi i know him from childhood um i mean from my school days and during my uh, med school Uh, he used to talk about vedatri maharishi and he used to talk about kundalini energy and other things now i knew him this, this i'm talking about 30 35 years back and again i had an opportunity to meet him when i went last march uh, after i did this foundation course i thought i should meet this uh, gentleman again so um so i met him and then he took me up to uh, the temple of consciousness the ayurveda recoil at alia and we had few sort of joined the few meditation sessions which i say it was a wonderful experience and then i came back here and then as you all know the covid hit and here we are uh, doing zoom meditation sessions so this is my sort of uh, um, uh, a short summary of my spiritual journey so um if we look into why we are having temptations and how we can overcome temptations each of our actions uh, is either physical mental or verbal now these actions creates an impression in the mind now in, in the vedas it's called as samskaras everything that we do is stored in the mind as subtle impressions i think the previous uh, speaker um, uh, has uh, mentioned about our guru vedanta maharishi uh, who uh, ha- who coined this term as genetic center and imprints so it's something equivalent to that i think um so these samskaras uh when uh, when they when we do repeated actions they get reinforced uh, and these subtle impressions um sort of um, can become more and more sort of uh, strong so i have to mention this law of karma which has been mentioned in the uh, the ancient text patanjali yoga sutras which is sort of written down somewhere around 2nd sec- century bc 
So it's a cycle of vritti, samskara and chakra. Vritti is nothing but thoughts that arise in the mind which propels you to do action. The samskaras are nothing but the impressions that's created by the thoughts which sort of uh, motivates to do a certain action. And this samskara, when they actually, uh, the action is performed, um, then you call that as a chakra. So this cycle goes on and on and on uh, and reinforces, and this is called the law of karma. So when these actions are propelled, but these actions are propelled primarily by our desires. So the number of times it's repeated determines the strength of the subtle impressions or the imprints. So as time passes, this subtle impression gets habits, they form habits. So if you take an example of uh, uh, you wanting to eat a chocolate, so you're eating a chocolate, okay, it's very nice, it's, it's tasty, I like it. You go back, so the imprint is formed, you come back again, you think about it, say, take the second one. So this goes and on and on and it reinforces to the extent that you eat multiple number of chocolates, many chocolates. So this is how the habits is formed. So when we reinforce our habit, it, it sort of forms a veil. Uh, it forms like it clouds our intelligence and it also uh, dulls the power of our discrimination. And it also heavily influences our comprehension to comprehend things. And uh, this dominates our decision-making ability as well. So these actions now are driven by habits. The actions have now sort of been reinforced and these reinforced actions uh, get us imprints as samskaras and they form habits. So these habits drive our thought, our speech and what will we do. So these samskaras can be strong and these strong samskaras are called vasanas. And they influence and shape our power of discernment from deep within. So it's discernment is nothing but judgment, the judgment of making the right thing or choosing the wrong thing or choosing between good and bad. So what we see reality through this is the vasanas, the powerful samskaras. Um, and and these powerful samskaras acts as a lens which distorts our perception. And the mind becomes no longer in control and you no longer are the mastery of your own thoughts and processes. So the mind takes the control. So the samskaras and vasanas, the strong samskaras are called vasanas and they make the decision about what you think and how to think and what you uh, what you want to do and everything. So mind is a very good servant, but it's very bad master. So one has to understand uh, the pleasure derived out of the materialistic world is temporary. So you, you eat a chocolate, get instant gratification, so uh, pleasure and then it's gone. So that's why you go back again and try to have some more. So this is temporary. So you have to realize these sensual pleasures are temporary and it has to be replaced with some other object which is permanent. And that should be God. When I say God, you're not talking about a form or shape or anything like that, it's knowledge. So in Vedas it says, <laughs> a, a quote as Jnanam Brahma. So, a Brahman is nothing but knowledge. So in my experience, I mean, obviously, uh, since November, I've been doing the, um, uh, the Sky Kundalini Yoga practice. So, um, so before that, I used to wake up at, say, half past four in the morning, uh, go to my, uh, I mean, kitchen, make a cup of coffee, uh, take the laptop, sit down and browse through the internet, read newspapers, local, from India, uh, all over the world, read the news, what's happening. Uh, 
by the time you realize it's gone, I mean, 6.30, something like that, and then you get ready for work and other things. So now I've replaced that by the Sky Kundalini, Sky Kundalini Yoga practice, which has made tremendous difference. So the, those one and a half hours, which I was sort of uh, dedicating it for just browsing the internet, and now I am dedicating it for Sky Kundalini Yoga practice, which, which has vastly improved my uh, physical health as well as my men mental well-being and it has increased my concentration power because my job obviously involves um, 12 hours of um, um, sort of uh, work, say my job starts at half past seven in the morning and goes up to half past seven in the evening. So it, it has given me a sort of concentration, uh, it has improved my concentration uh, to uh, sort of uh, uh, carry on my daily activities. So there is always a conflict that uh, I want to know something, but I want to do something else. So when this internal conflict is there, then you can't achieve things. You, you have to sort of uh, take away that I want to do something else uh, and practice what you have learned. So, so it is always a conflict in your mind that you want to know something, but you want to do something else. And you have to be true to, your, true to yourself. So internal truth is most valuable. Uh, I want to quote this um, um, uh, thing from St. Augustine. Uh, he tells, O oh Lord, uh, give me chastity and continence, but not yet. Um, so the last, the last few words are very important, but not yet. So you, you wake up in the morning, uh, you sort of uh, half past four, okay, let me sleep for another five minutes. Once that thought comes, not yet, then obviously it becomes a repetitive action. So you have to, you have to stop there and think. Okay, this is my time for uh, practice. I have to do it. So then it becomes an habit. Um, so obviously after the exercises, we go into the meditation. And I think Dr. Anand Kumar shared a, a very good sort of uh, uh, his sort of recordings from uh, one, of these, uh, one of these sessions, scientific sessions that was held about meditation techniques and other things. So uh, I do practice uh, some of his uh, techniques that he shared. Uh, so the important thing is, uh, uh, whenever thought arises in the mind, uh, you shouldn't ignore. And you shouldn't fight with it. You should rather play with it and make friends with it. So um, when I say make friends with it, not too long, it, it's all split seconds we are talking about. So. As you all know, aware, the consciousness uh, uh, or the thought uh, arises from the, if you, if you imagine a lake, uh, and if the bubble wants to come from bottom upwards, um, the bubble is the subconscious mind. So that's where the thought arises. And before it comes to the surface and we see as a bubble, where it manifests as thought in the conscious mind, there is a hiatus, there's a window of opportunity there. And you have to think, do I allow this thought to come into the surface or not? And you have to decide whether it is a good thought or a bad thought. And depending upon whether it is a good thought or bad thought, then you have to sort of uh, intervene and if it is a bad thought, you can substitute with another one. That's, that's how you sort of bounce back all the bad thoughts and stop uh, your thought formation. So between two successive thoughts is the stillness you feel in the mind. And, and that's, that's where you realize Brahman. And I presume my, my practice is sort of, as I told you, it's only 14, 15 months now. Uh, so I'm constantly doing it to increase the duration between the thoughts.
The other thing which I found is don't keep changing your meditation techniques. If you keep changing your meditation techniques, so you, you, you practice for a month, uh, then okay, I'll practice some other um, uh, sort of guru's technique, um, and you will you will keep on changing. Um, so you need to stick to it because it's not a sprint, and it's not even a marathon. It's you have to do this for your lifetime. So you need you need to find adopt practice. The other thing which I found was the positive affirmations. Uh, the, as, as we all do it towards the end of the meditation, the twofold path of virtue, Yerandonu Kapan Padu. And when I uh, sort of say that, I will not harm physically or mentally anyone. When I say anyone, uh, this includes both human beings and other living beings. So, uh, before all this, uh, or even when I started the Sky Kundalini Yoga practice, I used to eat meat. Uh, now I've totally turned into a vegetarian. So, uh, the, and in, in Tamil, there is a famous saying, Padipada Ramayana, Idipada Perumal Kovi. So, which, which translates to talk the talk, uh, but not walk the walk. Uh, it's a famous uh, saint, uh, Tirumula, uh, uh, who uh, uh, wrote uh, about 3,000 verses of uh, um, uh, poems called Tirumandaram. Uh, he lived around the same uh, era as uh, Padanjali, um, somewhere around 2nd, 3rd century BC. And uh, one of the um, eight limbs of the yoga, which is the Yamu, and if you um, go through that poem, uh, it says Kal Kamun, which is who neither drinks or nor lusts. So I used to have alcohol probably after I came to this country in the last 25 years or so. Stopped drinking now over the last year or so since I started the sky meditation practice. So there's no point in studying all these te uh, texts and poems and uh, all these uh, all these things, but you actually have to practice. So this has been shared uh, by, um, uh, by many of us in the past. So it's just a summary of what um, um, I have told you so far, which is watch your thoughts, they become your words. Watch your words, they become your actions. And your actions become habits. And the habits becomes your character. And that ultimately becomes your destiny. So, the way to overcome um, uh, quitting practice, uh, say you, you should have an intense yearning. You should have this uh, thorough desire. Um, if you don't have the desire, then, then obviously it's nothing. Um, and once you have that intense yearning, the only way to build it up is practice, practice and practice. So with those things, I conclude my short talk and my sincere thanks to uh, Thangarajan Master Professor Thangarajan. And I also thank uh, Assistant Professor Ganga Kumaransa for organizing all this meditation session. And my huge, huge thanks to Assistant Professor Dr. Sati because um, that's where all my spiritual journey started and he continues to give me support. And, um, and on this note, I also have to say, uh, when I sort of, uh, uh, um, sort of stepped up my meditation from Agna to Shanti and when it came to Duriya meditation, I was actually sort of uh, didn't know what to do with all these COVID things and other things. And when I arrived with Tangarajan sir, uh, that I really want to sort of uh, go to the next level. I don't know what to do. Uh, he, he actually rang me and told, uh, I, will, I will come to Lancaster. I live in Lancaster and he lives in Birmingham. Uh, so, so there are people uh, who, who can help you around if you are sort of really, really motivated to it. And we have to take this opportunity and sort of uh, progress forwards. 
and ultimately, obviously, Dr. Shakti um, sort of gave me uh, sort of the re-initiation. Um, uh, we had this sort of small uh, window where we can mix uh, uh, sort of three or four people around. Uh, so we ha I had my initiation um, uh, by Dr. Sakti, uh, and I'm practicing that, and it's a wonderful experience. And I also thank all the uh, participants uh, up here, without which this uh, meditation sessions wouldn't happen. And I also, I don't know whether Dr. Umapati is here. I think he started all these things uh, during this COVID period. And I have to say uh, my sincere thanks to him as well. So I finish my talk with this Maharishi scope. Uh, meaning, if you want to uh, acquire knowledge and if you have that intense desire, uh, Unless, unless you sort of attain it, your mind won't be sort of calm. Thank you.